Drumforge Bergstrand is a powerful and intuitive virtual instrument drum sampler plugin created by Drumforge in partnership with producer Daniel Bergstrand. Daniel has been at the forefront of metal production for decades, forging the drum sounds of artists such as Meshuggah, Behemoth, In Flames, Devin Townsend, and many, many others. Now you're able to use his exclusive signature drum sounds in productions of your own. This video is going to break down the entire plugin in detail and walk through every single element inside the plugin. This video is not intended to showcase the sound of the sampler. For sound demos, examples, and more information on the plugin, check out the other videos on our YouTube channel or visit drumforge.com. Also, this plugin goes very, very deep and has a lot of features to cover, so this is going to be a long video. If there's something you want to look at specifically, check out the timestamps in the description below. Let's take a look at Drumforge Bergstrand and walk through how it all works. We'll dive deeper into each section in a few moments, but first, let's take a look at how to navigate the plugin. We'll start at the top of the plugin window. Here you'll find the main navigation of the plugin, for quick access to the most important sections. Starting from the left, we've got the kit builder first. This is where you'll go to construct your drum kits. Next, you'll find the drum editor that enables you to edit each of your drums. Continuing on, you'll find the Drumforge logo, which opens the plugin settings window. Then below that is the preset menu, which allows you to browse, load, and save your drum kit presets. To the right of the logo, the music icon opens the song builder for writing music with drum grooves and fills. Next, the fader icon opens the mixer. Here you can mix your entire drum sound in the plugin. Finally, the list icon opens the mapping editor. This is where you're able to map specific MIDI notes to specific drums within your kit. Let's dive a bit deeper into each of these, starting with the Kit Builder. This is a great place to start. Here you can quickly construct, modify, and reorder drum kits. Running down the left side of the window are accordion menu options for the various elements of your kit. Click on any accordion header to reveal the drum samples in that category. Then drag and drop any of those samples on the left to the empty space on the right to add them to your kit. You can also double click to add drums here. Each square on this window is what we refer to as a drum card, and each drum card acts as a slot for a drum or cymbal in your drum kit. You may add up to 20 drums or cymbals to any kit that you create. Each drum card comes with a few simple controls, including a mute button, a solo button, a delete button, and cycle arrows that allow you to change the selected drum without losing any mapping or mix adjustments that have already been set. Note that deleting or removing a drum card will erase your drum edits, mixing settings, and any mappings tied to that drum card. Double clicking on any drum card will open the drum editor for that particular drum. Once you're on the drum editor with the drum selected, you gain an immense amount of control over that drum's sound. The drum editor allows you to mix a drum's individual microphones as well as other aspects such as ASR, pitch, and more. Depending on the drum that you've selected, you may see different options here. The various controls are displayed in various tabs which run along the bottom of the window. Starting with the fader tab, here you'll see each channel labeled on the scribble strip for each mic or sets of mics captured for that drum. Each channel can be individually panned, muted, soloed, or polarity reversed. The level for each mic can be set with the faders themselves. When a stereo miking technique is used, there is a swap button to flip the stereo image. By default, all drums are panned from the drummer's perspective. On the right hand side of the fader tab, you'll find the master fader. This can be used to raise or lower the overall level of this drum. The master fader features all of the same controls as the individual channels. Moving to the second tab, the ASR tab allows you to adjust the attack, sustain, and release envelope of each drum mic. One of the most common uses for this feature is reducing the sustain and release of the kick drums on fast drum parts. Working from top to bottom, each ASR channel has a visual display of the current ASR settings at the top. Immediately below the display is the attack knob. This adjusts the attack envelope specific to that mic. Next is the sustain knob for adjusting the sustain envelope of that microphone. The channel ends with the release knob for adjusting the release envelope. By default, the attack is set to 0 milliseconds. The sustain and release knobs are each set to 10 seconds. With these default settings, the ASR is not affecting any part of the sound. After ASR is the velocity tab. This is where you can adjust the dynamics of your drum based on a curve for MIDI note velocities. You're also able to set your minimum and maximum playback sample values from this menu. Similar to the ASR tab, the Velocity tab provides a clear visual readout of adjustments made to your drum. Working from left to right, you have a curve knob that controls how dynamic the sample engine will get when interpreting MIDI velocity. 
To favor harder hits, turn the knob to the right and the harder hits will begin to trigger more frequently throughout the input velocity spectrum, even if the note isn't being played at a super high velocity. The second knob determines the minimum velocity sample that should be played. For very aggressive music, turning this knob up will ensure that no soft hits are triggered. But for softer songs with ghost notes, keeping this value low is best. Similarly, decreasing the max knob will prevent the drum from triggering the hardest samples. This can be useful in softer genres, where a drummer may not naturally use as much force. The last control on the velocity tab is the dynamic knob. This controls the playback dynamics scaling range. By default, Drumford uses a 15 decibel range for separating the volume between velocity layers. Increasing this range will increase the volume difference between your softest and loudest hits. Lowering the range will result in less dynamic range between your softest and loudest hits. By setting the playback dynamic scaling range to zero decibels, your softest articulations will play back at the same volume as the hardest hits. Continuing through our drum editor, the sample tab allows you to remove any sample from sample engine playback and allows you to audition them individually for quick selection. This can be extremely helpful in narrowing down the sample variety in situations where you may only want to use one or two hits per drum rather than having lots of variety. The sample tab is split into three sections, articulations, velocity layers, and samples. First, select the sample articulation you'd like to edit from the section on the left. From there, you'll be able to choose which velocity layer you'd like to edit and boost or cut that layer by up to six decibels. Clicking on any sample name will audition that specific sample. The check mark or X on the right will enable or disable that sample from the sample selection algorithm. The last tab on the drum editor is the configuration tab. This contains important features for drum programmers. The first section on the configuration tab deals with the pitch and provides both a coarse and fine tuning knob. The coarse pitch knob adjusts the pitch of the drum up or down in semitone increments, and the fine pitch knob up or down in cent increments. Next to the pitch section is the alternation section. This feature automatically alternates hands and feet based on input speed for successive drum hits programmed with a single MIDI note. The feature can be enabled with the switch at the top, and the threshold can be set to determine the time in milliseconds between hits that is necessary to trigger automatic alternation. Moving on to the song builder, you'll see that this is a space where you're able to use Drumforge drum grooves and fills to write your songs. There are plenty of sorting options within this tab, so let's take a look at each of them. On the left, you've got your selection and sort menus. This pack selection menu allows you to filter your grooves by groove pack, the lead hand and song section menus enable you to filter your grooves by the drummer's lead hand focus or by the groove's intended song section. Options include standard song sections like verses and choruses. There are also less common options like breakdowns that you won't find in most other drum samplers. In the center of the window, you have your groove selection menu. Here you can sort, preview, and select your drum grooves. To audition a specific groove, double click on it or click the play icon. When you find the groove that you like, you can drag and drop it into the queue on the right. You can sort grooves by category, name, bars, tempo, or time signature. Click on the specific column header at the top that you'd like to sort with. Click again to reverse that sort. At the top of the groove selection menu, you have settings for audition tempo and host sync. This will control the preview or playback speed of the grooves and song queue. Enabling host sync matches the speed to the current BPM of your session. It's worth noting that the tempo label in the grooves list is the BPM that the groove was originally performed. There are no rules against using grooves that were intended for different speeds if your tempo isn't the same, but you may find your best results with grooves that closely align already. On the right of the song builder, you have the transport and song cue menus. The transport controls the playback auditioning of your song cue. Here you'll find controls like play, stop, and some arrows for navigating through the grooves in the cue. Below the standard transport options, you'll find the clear button, which will clear the cue, a multiplier button that can change your MIDI to play at a standard time, half time, or double time, and a cycle playback button that will allow playback to loop over a single groove over the entire queue or to be disabled altogether. Below the transport menu is the song queue, which is where you can order the grooves that you've selected for your song. You can change the position of each groove in the song by dragging the groove up or down in the list. If you no longer wish to keep a groove in the song, the trash can icon on the right will delete the groove from the queue. 
Once you're satisfied with your song, you can drag and drop the entire cue into your session with the drag to session button. This will put the MIDI notes and velocities of your selected grooves onto any MIDI track in your session for further edits and manipulation. Next up is the mixer. Here, you'll be able to access an entire console style mixer with routing. This powerful interface allows you to mix every aspect of your drum sound right in the plugin. You can also expand each drum card within the mixer. This gives you more comprehensive control over individual microphones that make up the entire drum sound of your drum. Each channel features full DSP mixing, eight channel groups, and routing features to support up to 16 stereo outs to your DAW. You can also parallel process any drum with any effect by using multiple sends. On the top of each channel, you can see the drum card icon for each drum in your mix for easy navigation and identification. Below it, your channel strip starts with a DSP mode dropdown with overview, saturation, compression, EQ, clipping, reverb, and send options. Using this menu, you can explore all of the features available for each channel in the mixer. The overview mode shows the processing chain on each channel, which can be reordered by dragging and dropping the processors as you see fit. The most common use for this feature is to move EQ before or after the Dynamics processor, but there are no restrictions on the order you use. Clicking on any processor from the overview menu will bypass the processor. Clicking on any processor from the screen while holding down control will take you into that module for further adjustment. The saturation module controls the saturation of your drum. There are three unique modes, each with their own coloration, tube, tape, and distortion. The gain knob will increase the harmonic distortion by driving the signal harder into saturation, while the out knob controls the overall volume of the drum as it leaves the saturation module. The compression module is where you can control the compression settings for the channel. At the top of the compressor, you'll find a high pass filter for cleaning up any unwanted low end, followed by three knobs and a switch. The ratio knob selects the compression ratio being applied, while the release knob sets the release time of the compressor. The threshold knob determines the threshold level or amplitude needed for the compressor to begin acting on the signal. The compressor supports two attack speeds, F for fast and S for slow. For monitoring purposes, a gain reduction meter has been provided on the right-hand side of each compression module. Next, we'll take a look at the EQ module, a full SSL-style parametric equalizer. Just like a traditional SSL EQ, the Drumforge EQ module is broken out into four bands, high frequencies or HF, high mid frequencies or HMF, low mid frequencies or LMF, and low frequencies or LF. The HF and LF bands can be set to bell, shelf, or filter modes using the curve button. The HMF and LMF both operate with a bell curve. All four EQ bands have frequency and gain controls, with gain settings ranging from negative 12 decibels to plus 12 dB. The HMF and LMF bands both have Q knobs to adjust the width of those particular bands. The next module is a simple yet powerful solution for creating punchier and more aggressive drums. The clip module is a single band clipper similar to Drumforge's DF clip. This clips the transients of your drums in a harmonically pleasing way, which increases the perceived loudness of each hit. Unique to the Drumforge mixer is the onboard reverb with nine preset reverb modes. The reverb section on each channel allows you to select one of those presets and then set the amount of pre-delay. From there, the wet knob adjusts how much reverb is applied to the signal. Our final module is the send module, which allows you to send your signal from up to four group tracks for parallel processing. Clicking the numbered box on the left enables or bypasses the send, while the knob controls the level that you're sending. Below the knob, you'll select the group that you'd like to send it to, and the pre-F button can be clicked to change each send to pre-fader mode. Groups are added to the right-hand side of the mixer window and can be processed and mixed the same way as individual tracks. Below the DSP section, each of your mixer channels have standard mixing controls that you'd traditionally find in any DAW. At the top are mute and solo buttons, followed by a pan slider. Below that, you'll find your fader and meter for setting levels and monitoring. For finer control, users can click on the text box at the bottom of the fader to input an exact fader level. You may enter values in increments down to one tenth of a decibel. The last icon on the channel strip is the channel expand icon, which will reveal a set of channels to control each individual mic of a drum card. These can be mixed like normal channels as well. 
While DSP modules can be swapped out quickly and easily on individual channels, sometimes you want to see the same view across all of your channels at the same time instead of changing each one by one. The view modes that run across the bottom of the screen will allow you to change every channel to a specific view mode with a single click. These tabs can be a huge time saver, especially with larger drum kits or complex mixer setups. Another great feature of the mixer that you may have noticed is the green plus icon at the top of several channels. This icon launches the drum shots loader, and this loader allows you to browse and load drum shot samples or one shot samples from your own collection. These selected samples will be attached to the designated drum card. The drum shots loader interface is extremely intuitive to use. First, locate your sample library using the browse menu in the bottom left hand corner. From there, filter based on category or vendor using the options on the left of the screen. In the center, all of your samples will be displayed. Clicking on a sample will select it, or you can hold control and click to audition it. Once you've found the perfect sample, you can adjust its mix using the controls on the right and select OK to attach it to your drum card. The last on our navigation bar is the mapping editor. This allows you to remap the default MIDI mappings of the drum articulations to any other note. The mapping editor also allows you to import your favorite MIDI mapping from other popular samplers. The main piano roll here shows you current note mappings that are active in the plugin. The left shows you the key that's been assigned as well as a musical note for it. Clicking on this key will audition the articulations that have been assigned to it. Next to the key is a remap button that will assign a drum articulation to that note. Clicking the MIDI icon to the right of any currently assigned articulation will enable MIDI note learn. While this mode is active, the articulation will be assigned to the next MIDI note played. This is one of the quickest ways to move drums around, and you can also drag and drop mappings too. Selecting any drum icon from the piano roll will display MIDI CC information below. This information includes the CC channel assigned to the drum or cymbal, an invert option for the CC range that's selected, and a range slider allowing you to select the minimum and maximum CC values for triggering the drum. At the bottom of the window, you'll have options to save your settings, load previously saved setting files, or select from a mapping preset from previous versions of DrumForge or other popular samplers. Last but not least, there are some important plugin settings we need to go over. Clicking on the DrumForge logo will launch the plugin settings window, where you can tweak some of the aspects of how the plugin operates. For most, these settings will only need to be adjusted once to get the plugin running optimally for your machine. The first option is your library path. If you've installed your samples elsewhere from the default location, use the browse option to reference that folder instead. This will also need to be done if your samples are ever moved after the plugin has been installed. As a note of caution, DrumForge Bergstrand samples should never be saved in the same folder location as your drum shots samples. Below your library path, there is an option to enable OpenGL. When enabled, the graphics performance inside the plugin will be improved. Please note, this feature requires a graphics card that supports OpenGL. Here, you can also determine how the plugin reacts to the scroll wheel on your mouse. Using the two checkboxes, you can enable or disable fader and knob movements based on mouse wheel input. Next, we have the playback voices. This is how many drum sample streams can be playing simultaneously. If you're running DrumForge Bergstrand on an older machine or in a session with many different resource-intensive plugins, you may wish to limit the number of voices used during playback. By default, the maximum number of voices is 200. In order to preserve system resources, you can print your drums to audio tracks prior to mixing the session. This will allow you to use the maximum number of voices while programming without losing any fidelity once your drums are finished. Finally on the plugin settings window is the playback voice meter. For users who suspect they're running too many voices at once or that the plugin is using a lot of CPU, this meter can be displayed in the plugin window for further monitoring and troubleshooting. As you've seen, DrumForge Bergstrand is an incredibly detailed drum sampler with tons of samples, editing, and mixing options. For those just getting started with drum sampling, we recommend starting with some of the presets to get familiar with how the plugin works before moving into more advanced options. Grooves are also a great way to get a quick and dirty drum track set up for testing out various features too. And don't forget the presets, which include fully mixed drum kits by Daniel himself. We hope you'll find as much inspiration in these drum samples as we have and look forward to hearing what you create with DrumForge Bergstrand. To learn more about DrumForge Bergstrand, check out the other videos on our YouTube channel or visit the best online resource for professional drum sounds, drumforge.com.